the Lord. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Mindy, for that. Take your Bible and go back, if you will, Jeremiah chapter 3 and in verse 6 will be our text verse where the Bible says, And the Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She is gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree. Now that caught my attention. And under every green tree, and there have played the harlot. When I saw that under every green tree, if you will, I began to think about the green trees that we see all throughout America during Christmas time that are decorated each, almost, and in every house. And so what is it at Christmas time that could get our attention back to the Savior, the one that we're supposed to be celebrating, the birth of Christ, if you will, during the Christmas season? I'm going to speak to you tonight on the Christmas backslider, the Christmas backslider. You see, so many times if we're not careful, here's what we'll do. At Christmas time, we get caught up in the lights, and by the way, the lights are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, you can ride down to different places throughout the Dallas metro area, and you can see people that have decorated, uh, they have gone uh, beyond themselves, and they have decorated their houses uh, in a splendorous way on the outside, and, and uh, many different variety of lights and many different types of themes that you can find from house to house all throughout the Dallas metro. You see it when you go to the mall. I mean, there is decorations everywhere. You can see that people are in the spirit of Christmas. Then you have the merchants that get into the spirit of sales. And uh, boy, they tell you, you need to buy it now because if you don't buy it now, you're going to miss an opportunity and it will never come again. Well, that's not true because the next time there's a holiday, it will come again. And then the next time there's a holiday, it will come again. And the next time there's a holiday, it will come again. And so sales never run out. Matter of fact, just to give you a little heads up, you're going to run out of money before the sales run out. And so, uh, so we have to be careful not to get caught up. You know, we have to be careful to be able to put Christ first. I, I tell you, I, I'm so glad that we have a soul winning church. I'm glad that we run buses. Uh, yesterday, I know the uh, America for Christ and, and their uh, desire to see people saved had over 80 people that bowed their heart, received Christ in the inner city of Dallas. And uh, those that uh, go the extra mile working on bus routes and those that go the extra mile to pass out a gospel tract throughout the week when nobody's looking and nobody's paying attention, but you decide that you're going to uh, be concerned about the souls of men, I say thank you so very much for that. But we have to be careful during the Christmas time that we ourselves do not become backslidden. The word backslider is only mentioned one time in the entire Bible. You'll find it in the book of Proverbs chapter 14 in verse 14 where the Bible says the backslider in heart, and by the way, isn't that where it starts? It always starts in the heart. Nobody knows that you're backsliding uh, until it starts to show up on the outside. But where it always starts is in the heart. It starts to uh, kind of cool down a little bit. You know, the fire that you used to have for God is not quite as hot as what it used to be. The desire that you used to have for God to live holy and to live right and pure between, before a holy God and in the face of manhood isn't quite there anymore. The desire to come to church and listen to old-fashioned Bible preaching is now something, well, I can take it or... I can leave it. And so the, it always starts in the heart. The Bible says the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. And a good man shall be satisfied from himself. And so we have to be careful that we do not let our heart drift. By the way, it starts on the inside. But what's on the inside, can I tell you for sure, always comes out. And so you have to be careful that it doesn't start on the inside whereby it does come out. The word backslider mentioned only one time there in the entire Bible, Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 14. However, the word backsliding is mentioned in 12 verses. Those 12 verses are all found in the Old Testament. Uh, and you'll see that most of those verses are given reference to that which is backsliding Israel or a backsliding daughter, which is referring to Israel. Let me give you, if I may tonight, uh, a description 
of what a backsliding person is going to face. And then I want to give you an antidote, how not to be there. And so let's view in our Bible tonight, go to the book of Galatians chapter 5 and in verse 7. And we're going to use our Bibles tonight, and I would encourage you to use yours tonight. But here we see the reality of backsliding. The reality of backsliding. Uh, all, although uh, backsliding is not found in the New Testament, uh, here's what we do understand, that it is described in the New Testament. You'll be able to see it through and through, though the word is not used. You'll be able to see it in the element of the way that people cease to live for their God. Here's what we see in Galatians chapter 5 and in verse 7. The Bible says, you did run well. Did, that's past tense by the way. He says, you did run well. He says, who have hindered you that ye should not obey? And so we understand there's the reality of backsliding. David, you come right up here and help me again, would you? And so there is the reality of backsliding. There's the reality of it taking place in a person's life. And so here Paul is writing those uh, Galatian Christians, and he says to those Galatian Christians, he said, you did run well. He said, you did. By the way, let me ask you, how are you running today? Where are you at today in serving God? Where are you at today in your heart? Because I'm telling you, even with the believer in your service for God, what is in the heart is going to show up on the outside. Do you carry Bible tracts with you? Do you pass out gospel tracts? Uh, do you pray before your meal? Uh, do you give thanks in front of your children to let them know that they also ought to have a thankful heart? Are you faithful to church coming Sunday morning, Sunday night? Yes, even Wednesday night? Are, are you a person that goes to the altar and you pray and you submit your heart to God because you know that's where the heart ought to be submit, submitted? Can I tell you tonight that uh, backsliding begins in the heart, but it does come out. There was John Mark. John Mark traveled on the missionary journey with Paul, but he backslid. Uh, there was Demas. Demas backslid, having loved this present world. Matter of fact, there's one time in Paul's life where Paul indicated this, that uh, at a very crucial time in his life, by the way, Paul indicated that nobody, no, not one person, was standing beside him as a faithful, faithful servant. You understand this, that it does start in the heart. Again, Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 14, the Bible says, the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. And so it starts in the heart, but then it shows up in the habits. It is show up uh, in your private prayer life that's not that way like it should be. It will show up in your desire to see people saved. Now, by the way, please don't compare yourself with somebody else because the Bible says some comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. So don't, 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 uh, don't say, well, I'll tell you what, I, I, I had uh, X amount of people saved this week, and so I'm more spiritual than so-and-so because I had more people saved this week than so-and-so had saved. Well, wait a minute. Did you know that God used people that were backslidden to bring other people close to God and, and to help other people understand their need of the gospel? And so you realize you could be backslidden and still go out soul winning and pass out tracts. You could be backslidden tonight and be working a bus route. You could be backslidden tonight working working in the choir. You could be backslidden tonight working as a teacher. You could be backslidden tonight working as an assistant Sunday school teacher. You could be backslidden tonight work as an altar worker. You could be backslidden tonight work as an usher. You could be backslidden tonight and be a deacon. You can be backslidden tonight and be a staff person. You can be backslidden tonight and be a faculty member. Do you know tonight that uh, nobody knows uh, how your walk is with God except you and you alone? It always starts in the heart, but it shows up in the habits. It'll show up in your prayer life. It will show up in your Bible reading. It will show up in your desire to see people saved. It will show up in your pocketbook or in your wallet, whether you're tithing or not, whether you're giving offerings above the tithe. It shows up. I've often said, you show me your uh, checking account, and I'll show you where your heart is. You know, it shows up in your billfold. It shows up in your church attendance. You know, whether you drag in late or you show up early. Uh, whether you come excited about the things of God or you're miserable and it's written all over your face. Can I tell you tonight that uh, starts in the heart, shows up in the habits, and then it spreads to others. 
You know, uh, when somebody uh, has a backslidden heart, if they're not careful, uh, it will spread inside of the family. You ever seen somebody that's a backslider? They're kind of cantankerous. You ever seen somebody that's a backslider? Uh, they're kind of tense. You ever see somebody that's a backslider? They're somebody that's just downright disagreeable. You ever seen somebody that's a backslider? Uh, they're somebody that's just hard to get along with. You ever see somebody that's a backslider? You can do flips trying to please them, but you're not going to please them because you're always are going to be flipping in the wrong direction. Can I tell you, a backslider is hard to get along with. And because of that, it affects others that are around them. It affects family members and it affects church members. It affects their friends and it affects those that live in the neighborhood. And it affects those that walk by the way. And it affects those that ride in the car. It affects those that's beside them. Why? Because you cannot keep that which is in uh, on the inside all the time because it is going to come out. There's the reality of backsliding. But then there's reasons. There is reasons why people backslide. Sheldon, you come help me if you will. And so there is reasons why people backslide. I appreciate Sheldon. He went soul winning with me yesterday, and I appreciate him so much. And so uh, uh, there's reasons. Why is it that people backslide? I mean, you know, if there's the reality of backsliding, and there is, and there is that which is the uh, hurtfulness of backsliding, and there is then why in the world would anybody want to backslide? If it's going to be detrimental to your marriage, why would you want to do it? If it's going to be detrimental to your child-rearing efforts, then why in the world would you want to do it? If it's going to be detrimental to your relationship with other people, why would you choose to backslide? If it's going to be detrimental to your church life and the very health that you have in your relationship with others, then why in the world tonight would you want to backslide? The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 49, in verse 4, the Bible says, it says this. It says, wherefore, it says, glory is thou in the valleys. It says, uh, thy flowing valley. It says, oh, backsliding daughter. It says, that trusteth in her treasures. Listen to it now. Saying, who shall come unto me? Kind of snobby, huh? I mean, here's uh, that which is a, a, a group of people that are backsliding. And as they're backsliding, here's the thing. Uh, there's some things that have a hold of them. Now, come on. You, you know sometimes there are things that get a hold of us that will cause us to take our eyes off of the Lord. Let me give them to you. What are the reasons that people backslide? Number one, uh, pro, uh, uh, pro, uh, that which is possessions. Possessions. Things that they... Things that they have, things that they want to have, things that they de desire to have, possessions. They put their eyes on things. Listen to it. Over in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and in verse 10, the Bible says, it says, uh, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, it didn't say that money is the root of all evil. It's when you put that money before the Lord. It's when you fall more in love with it and it is in the wrong place. It becomes now your priority. It becomes now your God. It becomes now what you serve rather than allowing it to be a servant to you. It says, which uh, some having coveted after have erred from the faith. Coveted after. They long to have it. Boy, I just want to have more. Boy, I would be satisfied and I would be happy if I had a better car. I would be satisfied and I would be happy if I had a bigger house. I'd be satisfied and I'd be happy if I just had more money. I'd be satisfied and I'd be happy if I could just eat more. I would be satisfied and I would be happy if I just had this type of prestigious clothing that I would wear. Listen to it. The Bible says here that there are possessions that will overtake us. The Bible says, erred from the faith, piercing themselves through with many sorrows. You ever see somebody that has a lot, but they're unhappy? You ever see somebody that lives in a real nice house, but they can't even get along with themselves? Yeah, you ever see somebody that uh, they, they, you know, they look at themselves in the mirror in the morning and they can't stand who they are? But yet they've got all these possessions. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and in verse 10, the Bible talks about Demas. For Demas, Demas had forsaken us, having loved this present world, listen to it now, and is departed, it says, on the Thessalonica. 
It says here, and it talks about to Galatia, and it talks about to uh, Titus, and, and on to uh, that which is a uh, different place. Now, what happened? Here's what he did. He departed. Why did he depart? The Bible says, having loved this present world. He was caught up in the world system. Possessions. Another reason that sometimes a person will get backslidden is because of pride. You know, I mean, after all, I deserve more attention than what I'm getting. I deserve more pay than what I'm getting. I deserve more recognition than what I'm getting. You know, I should be the one that has that job. I should be the one that drives that car. I should be the one that has that refined clothing. I should be the one that lives in that house. I mean, after all, look what I have done. By the way, uh, the, the problem with pride is it's always I that's in the dead center. Listen to it tonight. Sometimes a person gets backslidden because of possession. Sometimes because of pride. Sometimes because of peers. You know, the Bible says over in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20, the Bible says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools, the Bible says, shall be destroyed. And so sometimes a person will get backslidden because of peers. You know, uh, always trying to impress somebody else. Always trying to stay up with the Joneses or run side by side with the Smiths. And if you're a Jones or Smith tonight, please forgive me. All right? And so, but always trying to be somebody that is just, you know, wanting to be on the acceptable rim. Now, can I tell you, when you start living for God, you don't have to walk away from your worldly friends. I'm going to tell you something. When you start living for God, your worldly friends will walk away from you. When you start uh, stepping out and saying, hey, listen, I'm going to give myself to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not going to hold anything back. If God wants me uh, to go to the mission field, I'll go to the mission field. If God wants me uh, uh, to go and serve in some foreign country that's a dangerous foreign country, that's where I'm going to go. If God wants me to be a preacher, that's what I'll do. If God wants me to be a youth director, that's what I'll do. If God wants me to sing in a church or work a bus route in a church, if God wants me to sing in the choir, or yes, even work in the nursery. That's what I'll do. You know, a person that is surrendered, a person that puts Jesus Christ first in their life, they're walking away from that which is the possessions. They're walking away from that which is the pride. They're walking away from that which is the peers, even though the peers might be going one direction. You ever see the cool dude? You ever see the cool dude? See, you know the cool dude. You know who I'm talking about? You know the cool dude. You know, they have a certain way they walk. You ever see them? You ever see the guys in the neighborhood that wear their pants way down here because they don't have the character to pull them up where they should be? You know why? Because they're trying to be accepted by those that are out there. Now, can I tell you, if you want to be accepted by a crowd, you ought to have a desire. And you, men, you better say amen. You, not yet. I'm not there. But if you want to be accepted by the crowd, let me tell you, the crowd that you ought to be want to accepted by is right here. This is the crowd that counts. This is the crowd that's out there trying to keep somebody out of hell. This is the crowd that has God's attention. And I'm telling you tonight, if I was going to be accepted by any crowd, it wouldn't be by somebody that puts their nose and thumbs their nose up at God and thumbs their nose up at the Bible. Hey, let them call you a Bible thumper and let them call you some spiritual weirdo. That's fine. But I'm telling you tonight, you ought to thank God that God has given you the opportunity to be able to serve him. Don't look for reasons not to serve him. You stand up. You serve God. You step forward. Let God help you. I'm saying tonight there's the reality of backsliding. There's the reasons of backsliding. Oh, here's a terrible thing. Let me give you the results of backsliding. Avery, come help me if you will. The results of backsliding. You know, there's some nasty now and nows that will happen in your life if you backslide? Did you know that? 
You say, oh, I'm a, I'm a member of Parkside Baptist Church. God bless you. Well, you know, preacher, I'm a f- fundamental, independent, premillennial, hellfire, soul winning, separated, believing, Baptist. Good for you. But you can be in the strongest church in the world. And backslide. You can have the best mama and the best papa of anybody that's ever been born. And backslide. You can have the best friend of all the bestest friends in all the world. And backslide. Your daddy could be a deacon. Your mama could be a Sunday school teacher. Your brother could be a bus captain. Your sister could be a nun. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Baptist nun. Revelation chapter 2 and in verse 5, here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. So he says, remember it. Remember when the days were good? Come on. Remember when you just could not wait to come to church? Man, it's going to be good. Remember that? Remember when Brother Pal Moore, he'd get up to sing. You had that hymn book in your hand. You're just waiting. You're just waiting. I mean, you just, I mean, it was like, oh, man, this is going to be so good. Man, I'm in church. They're going to sing a song. Wow, it's good. Hey, and Brother Pal Moore says, open your hymn book. And you're like, okay, come on, hurry up. Stop talking so slow. He says, open your hymn book to such and such page, and let's sing out. And you start singing out, and everybody wishes that you would not have done that. (laughs) Results of backsliding. He says in uh, uh, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 5, remember, remember, therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent. He said, you need to change your mind, sir. You need to change your mind, ma'am. See, backsliding is a choice. Well, you know, preacher, I fell. No, you didn't fall. Quit. You took a deliberate step. You thought about it before you stepped. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, do thy first work, do the first works. By the way, that first works, as far as I know, that's talking about soul winning. Amen. Listen, it says, and, and do the first works. It says, or else I will come on to thee quickly. I will remove thy candlestick. It says, out of his place, except thou repent. Now, what's that mean? Well, let's say that uh, God decides that here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to punish you for backsliding. You know what happens? Your light becomes dim. Now you come to church to show off. Now you come to church to get attention. Now the cool guys and gals sit there when the preacher's preaching. They're making fun of truth. They're not paying attention. They're cutting up. They're looking at each other and smiling like two wolves playing around trying to get the sheep in the backyard. Now, can I tell you, your light becomes dim. Preacher would be preaching something and, 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 oh, it's not about you. By the way, a backslider, it's never in their mind about them. The light becomes dim. You lose your testimony. You lose your radiance. Here it is. You lose your joy. It's gone. Light becomes dim. Disappointed lambs. Little children walk around. Those that are young believers, they walk around. And they're disappointed because they say, well, where's so-and-so? I thought so-and-so loved Jesus. I thought they were faithful to God. 
You see, your very presence in the house of God makes a difference in somebody else's life. There's somebody watching you tonight. You say, well, I'm not important. You are important. Because the very day that you go missing is the very day people start questioning what's wrong with him. What's wrong with her? Why are they fallen? Why are they missing? Now, I believe this. I believe if you're saved, you ought to act like it. I believe if you're saved, you ought to be faithful to church. You say, well, I don't get anything out of it when I come. Then I believe you ought to take that wicked heart, lay it on the altar, confess your wickedness, come to God and cry out and say, God, help me to get right so you can speak to my heart again. See, the problem's not with the preaching. The problem's with the person that is in the pew that is deciding that they don't want the preaching. The light begins to dim. There's disappointed lambs. When a daddy backslides, a child is disappointed. When a granddaddy backslides, a grandchild is disappointed. When a brother or sister backslides, another sibling is disappointed. When all of a sudden, that which is a person that uh, doesn't have uh, the character, yea, the love for God, just to be faithful. How hard is it to be faithful? There's dim light, disappointing lambs. There's, there's, if you would please, a, a disgusting layout. You say, what is that? Well, now they're not where they should be. And most of the time, they're going to wind up like the prodigal son down in the pig pen. You know? I mean, they're not where they should be, and so because of that, they start going to places that they ought not go. I mean, now they don't want old-fashioned religion, so they're going to go find a more liberal church where they can have their liberalities not feel bad about their sin. (coughs) Hello? You won't believe this, but there's churches in the metro area. They have Bible studies, and they bring liquor out to drink in the Bible studies, and they call themselves a ministry of the church. That's ungodly and wrong. You go to church. By the way, I think church ought to be church. You know, I think that it ought to remind you of God's holiness and God's Righteousness, and I think that the man of God ought to get up and uh, preach the uh, Bible is what I think. Well, I got two or three amens. Thank you very much. (laughs) Statement number one, I said there's a reality of backsliding. Statement number two, reasons for backsliding. Statement number three, results of backsliding. Let me give you this. Let me give you, if I may, please, uh, that was just a restoration. The restoration from backsliding. The restoration From back sliding. All right? And so, uh, Micah, come here and help me, would you? Come here, buddy. All right? The restoration. How is it that a person that backslid can be restored? Now, I'm going to tell you something. One of the biggest things you could ever do, one of the best things you could ever do, one of, if you would please, the most beneficial things you could ever do in your life, When somebody backslides, it's not trash them, but restore them. Anybody and most people will trash them, but somebody needs to walk beside them to restore them, to bring them back to where they ought to be in their service for Jesus Christ. Hosea chapter 14 and verse 4, the Bible says this, I will heal, listen to it, it's good. I will heal their backsliding. See, God's in the healing business. I will heal their backsliding. When somebody backslides, oh, look, they don't need somebody to come over and kick them. They don't need somebody to punch them. They don't need somebody to hit them. They need somebody to say, hey, it's going to be okay. Let me help you. Let me bring you to where you should be so that you can have close fellowship with God again. Let me help you. That's what they need. I'm saying this tonight. Uh, Here's what it says. Hosea chapter 14 and verse 4. It says, I will heal their backsliding. It says, uh, I will love them freely. It says, for mine anger is turned away from him. Isn't that good? 
Well, I'm mad at my dad because my, my daddy backslid. I'm just so mad at him. You're not supposed to be mad at him. If you're a loving child, you're supposed to pray for him. You're supposed to love him. You're supposed to forgive him. You're supposed to encourage him. You're supposed to walk beside him. If you've got a mama that's backslidden, you're supposed to love her. You're supposed to encourage her. You're supposed to help her. You're supposed to walk beside her. You've got a brother that's not living for God, or you've got a sister that's not living for God. You're not supposed to kick them. You're not supposed to punch their lights out. You're not supposed to uh, look at them as a spiritual dwarf. You're supposed to walk beside them and say, look, I'm here for you. I want to help you. I want to be beside you. I want to walk beside you. I want to restore you. I want to help you get back to serving God because that's what it's all about. So how do we do that? Number one, realize where you are. Realize where you are. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 16, the Bible says, Israel back, listen to it now, Israel slideth back as a backsliding heifer. It says, now the Lord, it says, will feed them as a lamb in a large place. So what do you do? Understand that there's the restoration from backslide. The Lord is there. He never left. He didn't move. You're the one that moved. You're the one that changed. You're the one that cooled down. You're the one. Now, come on. Problems come up and you say, well, I'll tell you what, I'm just having a difficult time with the problems. Let the problems come, but don't let your relationship with God suffer Amen. because of the problems. Amen. We understand this. Realize where you are. You know, there, there's going to be times in your life, each and every one of you, I and the staff and faculty, there's going to be times when all of a sudden you will go through a backsliding time. You say everyone, I believe everyone. There's going to be times when you say, I don't feel like passing on the gospel track. You know you should. There's going to be times when you say, well, I got up this morning and I didn't read the Bible and I'm still okay. But you should. Well, I don't want to go to the altar why do I need to go to the altar every single time? I mean, it bothers me. I mean, people say, they're going to think something's wrong with me. Well, they may think that you're just trying to stay right with God. Realize where you are. Statement number next, remember what you left. You know, the saddest thing about backsliding is you don't realize how good you got it until you lost it. You just don't realize how good it is. People go on vacation from our church, and I don't think that we have a perfect church, and I'll tell you why, because you don't have a perfect pastor. I'll tell you another reason. We don't have perfect members. So you're in a very imperfect place tonight. I hope you like it because you're imperfect too. Now, wait a minute. Watch this, if you will. But, you know, people go on vacation from our church, and they say, boy, I just couldn't wait to get back home. I just couldn't wait to get back in there under that type of preaching. I couldn't wait to get back there under that type of singing. Boy, I just couldn't wait to get back there for that type of fellowship. See, can I tell you what? You know, uh, once you taste of the Lord, if you start tasting of other things, it doesn't taste the same. It doesn't taste the same. Well, you know, I wish that our music program was different where, you know, the people, you know, they kind of wiggled here and they wiggled there and they, you know, they did this and they did that and, you know, stuff like that. We don't want them to do that. We see the deacons doing that on the parking lot. And when we see them doing it on the parking lot, it scares us. So we try and keep it on the parking lot. Remember what you left. Luke chapter 15 and verse 17, the Bible says, And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father, it says, my father have, it says, bread enough and to spare. And I perish with hunger? See, he got out there and he said, it's not what I thought it was. I thought it'd be different. See, the grass always looks greener on the other side, normally because they use more manure. I was a farmer. Can, can I tell you, uh, if you're going to work, it takes work 
to keep the thing right. Oh, come on. Somebody say amen. amen. I feel like a strange man speaking on an island somewhere. Now watch this, if you will. So what do you do? You realize, you remember, you repent. What's that mean? It means you change your mind. How about going to the Lord and saying, look, I, I have sinned. I have sinned. I have sinned. Well, you know, I'm praying for so-and-so that they would get right. When's the last time you went to the Lord and said, Lord, I have sinned. God, I'm not where I should be, and I know it. Look, I'm telling you, we get so comfortable. We get so comfortable. We got our nice cars, and we drive along. We got our nice suits, and we look like we're fit for burying. You know, uh, you know we, got the, we got the long skirts, and you say, wow, look at me. You've got the hairdo. I mean, you know, you, you got the glue that keeps the hairdo doing what it's supposed to do. You know, you've got you had all this stuff. You got the pearly whites when you smile. I mean, you got it all. You got the big old Baptist King James Bible when you walk in. If your kids don't behave, you'll preach to them or smack them. Man, you got it all down. But what's in the heart? See, we understand this tonight. In that restoration, we have to realize where we are. We have to remember what we left. We have to repent of our wrong actions. Listen to it now. I'm almost done. We have to return to the Father. Return. Return. Come on. Get back. We're, okay, you know some of you kids that came here to our Bible college, you're not more backslidden now than when you came. You said, but I thought that Bible college was supposed to be good for me. It is, but you're the one messing it up. Because you're not walking with God. You're allowing your classes to substitute in your personal walk with God, and can I tell you, dear friend, it doesn't work. You have to have that personal walk with God. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 22, the Bible says, Return, says ye backsliding children. He says, and I will heal your backslidings. That's plural. I will heal your backslidings. It says, behold, uh, we come unto thee. It says, for thou art the Lord our God. Jeremiah chapter 8 and in verse 5, the Bible says, Why then, it says, is the people of Jerusalem, it says, slid back like a perpetual backsliding. It says they hold fast deceit, and it says they refuse to return. Luke chapter 15 and verse 18, the Bible says, I will arise and go to my father, uh, it says, and say unto him, Father, I have sinned uh, against heaven, and, listen to it now, and before thee. You know, uh, if uh, you're not right with your parents, then you have a responsibility to not only get right with God, but you have a responsibility to get right with your mama and daddy. Because you cannot be right with your mom and daddy and be right with God. You got to be right with both. You got that? That's the way it needs to be. Hello? Yeah. Some boy sassing his mama. Some boy sassing his daddy. Well, help. And saying, well, I just don't feel like it. You get, your, get yourself right with God. Yeah. Get to an altar and say, God, I've sinned. I've not always sinned against you, but I've sinned against my daddy. I've sinned against my mama. Well. And God, I, I'm coming to you and I'm asking you to forgive me of that. Luke chapter 15 and verse 19, the Bible says... And, uh, and here it is, it says, and, and, and I am no more worthy to be called by his son. He says, make me as one, listen to it now, can you imagine your kid coming to you and saying this? Make me as one of our hired servants. Boy, it's a good day when a son or a daughter gets right to that level. Mom, dad, I'm not right with God, but I'm telling you, I'm not even worthy to be called your son. I've grieved your heart so much, I'm Sorry. That's, that's true repentance there. Then what do you do? Then you repent, uh, repeat your basic Christian duties. It says here, and I'm done, last, last thing, here it is. Last verse I'll read, here it is, here it is. It says, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else shall I come unto thee quickly, and remove thy candlestick, it says, how the place except thou repent. So what are you supposed to do? Go back to the basics all over again. 
You know, the Christian life is not complex. It's not. You don't have to be a theologian to figure it out. It's not hard to figure out. It's challenging to live. It is challenging to keep God first. And can I tell you, you have to do that on a minute-by-minute basis. It's not a day-by-day. It's not a week-by-week. It's minute-by-minute. Because if you don't, you start to slip. How many people have I seen living on the streets, living under a bridge somewhere? You stop and say, how'd you get here? And they testify. I didn't mean to wind up here. It was just one decision that was wrong on top of another decision that was wrong on top of another decision that was wrong, and I wound up right here where I am. You know why? Simply because they decided that's what they wanted to do. Thank you. Be seated. Take those signs with you. I dream for every girl to be able to walk down an aisle for me to be the preacher that's one of our girls, and Mia, be able to marry them to their knight in shining armor. I, you say, preacher, you believe there's hope? I believe there's a God. And I believe there's hope for everybody that names the name of God. And so I, I, I dream one day of your daddy escorting you down the aisle as a bride, I don't get in a hurry. I'm talking about 30 or 40 years of age. You got a while. But I dream of your daddy walking you down the aisle and you standing here and I say unto that man who giveth this woman in marriage and he speaks up with a very proud, stately voice and he says, her mother and I. Of course, he may have some other words too. And then you come up here to a sacred place and I... uh, go through the vows, and you repeat them very earnestly, very sweetly, and very directly from your heart. I pronounce you husband and wife, so I say, and you may now kiss your bride. And then as you walk out in your heart, you say, wow, it was worth it. It was worth it. Can I tell you? One day it'll be worth it to you. But not if you get backslidden. One day, that bus captain that is struggling right now, and he goes out on a bus round, he says, I just can't get it up. I just can't get it up. But God in heaven looks down and says, I see you. I see that you're struggling, but yet I see you're faithful, and you're not giving up, and you're not throwing in the towel, and you're not quitting. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to touch some people's heart to move on your bus route, and I'm going to start to build your area just so you'll have more people to be able to reach. And the God of heaven says, I'm going to sweetly bless you because of your faithfulness, and God in heaven can do exactly that. You study hard in school and you give it everything you got. And you say, well, it's just not worth it, man. I tell you what, I'm just so frustrated and I don't see why I need to learn all this stuff. I'll never use any of this stuff. And all of a sudden you get a call. The college accepts you. You applied for because of your high academic status. They say you made the top charts and uh, we want to accept you into this particular uh, academic college. And they extend you a scholarship because you're so scholarly. And all of a sudden you go and you participate and you get involved. You earn a degree and you come back and you say, preacher, I've got a burden to help you. Can I buy you 50 more buses, please? Say, preacher, you're just dreaming. No, I believe that God could use you. You're sitting here tonight and you say, preacher, I don't think God could use me. What could he use me to do? He might use you to turn a nation. He might use you to turn a city. He may call you to preach, which is the greatest calling on the face of the earth. And all of a sudden you come to Bible college and you get out there and you say, I'm not much. But I'll tell you what, God, I'm giving you everything I've got. And I'm going to surrender and I'm going to put you first. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to blaze the trails for heaven's sake. And I'm going to pass out gospel tracts and care about people and God will use you. But not if you get backslidden. Let me show you this and I'm done. Stand up if you would please Brother Crutcher. Hold your Bible nice and high right in front of you. Let's say that's the will of God for my life. 
I'm supposed to get to where he is. That's the will of God. And all of a sudden, I got a friend that pulls on me, and he says, hey, look, man, let's not go to church. And don't, why are you always faithful to church? You know, don't, let's just hang out, man. We'll go down to the mall. We will chill with the chicks. Well, in today's vernacular, that means girls. And so we're going to take and we're going to, I mean, that's what we're going to do. All right? Now, now, wait a minute. And he pulls on me. And he pulls on me. But I've got a friend, a Christian friend. I only got one. These guys are pulling on me. They're trying to pull me back. But this dear brother keeps in front of me. And he keeps saying, hey, come on. It'll be okay. These guys are pulling on me. Come on, man. Don't listen to that preacher. Come on. I mean, you know, he's just trying to get you to live for God. You know, come on. He's trying to get you to surrender your life. How good could that be? I mean, he's up there representing God. You don't have to listen to him. Pay attention to me. Let's go off and have fun. Let's skip church. Let's go watch some filthy uh, movie. Hey, let's go over and get drunk together. And, and these guys are pulling. These guys are pulling. These guys are pulling. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I, I, I appreciate you. He keeps pulling me. By the way, he doesn't look very tough. Losing hair. The shadow of things that will be. Isn't that good? Let's go. <laughs> I come to church. God warms my heart. Hot tears flow down my cheek. And I say, it's good to be back. Amen. I stay faithful. I love God. Get married. Have nine kids. <laughs> grow old. Watch my grandkids, my great-grandkids. They're all sitting around. All of a sudden, I look around. Wow, that's a grandson. He's an usher. There's another grandson. He's an usher. There's a granddaughter. She's a Sunday school teacher. Wow. Look at this over here. Look at the faithful. God blesses a faithful man. But you've got to be faithful to get the blessing. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Father, we thank you for tonight.